Hey, what's up? It's Charlie, aka Domestic Rockstar. And today I just wanted to have a talk about what's wrong with the Vegas music scene. As most of you know, I'm in a metal band and I, I sing. I've been doing this band for about 15 years this month, actually 15 years. And we've been in the Vegas music scene for the last 10 years. Now recently there's been some online conversations about what's wrong with the scene and what we could do to fix it as bands and as a community. So I wanted to take this time to talk about what I think is wrong with the scene. And I did post yesterday kind of an open conversation to all of my friends in the music scene and the community to get their uh, opinions on what's wrong with the scene. And most of what I had already planned on talking about uh, was covered there with a few other um, additions to say uh, the least. But let me get into it. Um, so the number one thing Actually, I don't want to number them because one is not more important than the other. They're all factors in a, a big problem that's happening right now in the scene. So I just want to list them out. So one of the issues is the venues. We have Backstage Bar and Billiards, Beauty Bar, Vamped, Cornish Pasty, which is considerably new for, for metal. Um, we're playing there tomorrow night. Um, it'll be our first time playing there. They just got a stage. They don't really have all the soundproofing done in there, but it is awesome to have one more venue to play. And then we have Dive Bar. Those are pretty much the five main venues in town that you can play. Um, the all ages venues, the Church and Eagle Airy Hall are sometimes cool with bands like mine playing there. We've never played at Eagle Airy Hall. It's pretty much run by one guy and I really don't think he likes my band, which it is what it is, but we did play at the church. Uh, it's really hard in this town to play all ages shows because a lot of those venues don't put any marketing behind hitting the kids that are actually going to attend the shows. And unless you're playing with a band that's in high school or a band that has that younger demographic, it's hard to get a crowd out there. Most of our crowd are in their mid twenties to thirties, sometimes forties, and they want to drink. They don't want to go to an all ages club and just hang out and hope to get a $5 water. But most of them, they don't want to go to all ages shows. So uh, that's one of the issues that we have. There's not enough metal clubs in this scene to survive. We have over 2 million people in Las Vegas and with only five, sometimes seven venues, uh, they're basically not getting anything new. And there's not a lot of targeted marketing towards specific niche genres like metalcore or death metal. There's a lot of death metal in this town and there's there's death fest that's happening every year, which is awesome. But a lot of those bands that are playing death fest aren't from here. So the bookers and the people that organize that are doing a really good job of getting bands that don't necessarily get to play Vegas because they're not big enough to play House of Blues or The Joint or vinyl per se and death metal is hard to book. So uh, it's great that they have those, but there's not a lot of the local death metal bands that play very often. If, if they get to play Death Fest, that's great, but there's not a lot of venues that are allowing metal. When we first moved here 10 years ago, there was a lot of venues and not a lot of good metal bands to play in all of the venues. So it was easier to get a show, the crowds were bigger, and it wasn't as difficult as it's become over the last like three to five years. And that's where I've seen the biggest change in the scene here. It's the last three to five years. Then we have the bookers. And there once was like a lot of bookers when we first moved here. There was so many people that we could deal with to, to book a show that had an inn at a venue or knew of a really cool place to play or had house parties that they knew of. And now there's only a few. And while I appreciate those few, they the metal shows are not their money maker. That's not how they make their money because of all of the factors I'm gonna go into below. But the venues are limited. So the bookers only have limited venues they can book at that allow metal and while some of them are working really hard to do well for the seam, we've we've seen a conflict of interest with some of them having their favorites or their own band play a lot of the really good shows, which with the scene the way it is, I get it. Their friends 
or their own band, they know what kind of marketing is going to go behind that band on a specific bill when a bigger touring package comes to town. So I get it. But these are just some of the factors. And then we have the crowd. So for the last three to five years, our metal crowd has dwindled down. And there's a lot of different factors that have to do with that. Um, a, Vegas is a transient town. So we see a lot of people come and go. Uh, so in this town, it's really hard to establish a fan base that sticks around for a few years. When we were in Sacramento, we had the same fan base from when we first started our first band in 2001 until we left in 2008. And it grew and grew and grew. And having a community where not a lot of people come and go, they usually are there for life or they've moved there and they're staying there for a while. Sacramento was a completely different type of community like that. Where Vegas, we get a lot of 20-somethings that move in for jobs or because they want to live in Vegas, and they come to shows, they start to like a band, and then poof, they're gone one day. And then we find out, oh, that person like moved back home to Michigan or whatever. So that happens a lot. And, and that affects other things too that have to do with the scene, but it's really hard to get that lo local fan base if it's like churning. Um, and then there's always shows. This is one of the, inter I think it is the entertainment capital of the world, and it's really hard to play one show as a local band when there's, you know, Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake are on this strip, or Motley Crue has a residency. It's really hard for us to get that crowd out when there's something going on every single night we're playing. We're playing tomorrow night. There's like three other shows going on. So it's gonna be really hard for us to get 75 to 100 people in a little tiny venue when there's so much other shit going on and people get friends that come into town and they wanna go down to the strip and they wanna go party and do something else. So it's really hard for us to draw any time, any day of the week when there's a million other things going on in this town. In places like Sacramento or in places like Phoenix, there's not the same type of entertainment going on all the time. So you have bigger crowds, you have a better fan base, a local fan base that goes out regularly to shows. We have that here, but it's not as big as it is in those other towns because there's so many other things to do. And it's really hard when there's five venues in town for us to play. There's metal bands playing or hard rock bands playing at one of those venues every night a week in the weekend. So we're competing against two other shows up for the same crowd because like I said, there's not a big enough crowd and there's not enough venues. Um, and then and entertainment in general has moved to online consumption. If I like a band and they are playing or out of town, I'll drive out of town to go see them. But to get my interest into that band, I had, I've looked them up online, I've watched their videos, I've listened to their music online before I even go out and see them live. And on a local level, it's even harder because we have to worry about putting ourselves out there professionally online and getting a fan base online before we can try to bring anybody in through the door. And now with YouTube and Facebook videos, it's so easily accessible that a lot of those potential fans that would be at a show might sit at home and watch it and not have to take the risk of going out, paying for parking downtown, especially downtown Vegas now, and even at the Mandalay Bay where Hustle Blues is. It costs like $10 to park there for a show now where it used to be free. And then if you're not parking, you're trying to take an Uber and that's another 20 to 30 bucks just to get down to the venue to then pay five or $10 at the door to see some bands you've never heard of. So one of the issues too with all of the online consumption is there a band like mine a lot of the bands that are in our scene are around my age you know mid 20s to late 30s and most of us have been playing music or being in a band for a decade or a decade and a half like us so we took the old days, the old strategies of flyering, going to other bands' shows, putting up posters at music stores, tattoo shops, trying to get in all of the magazines, trying to get on the radio, trying to get on all the local radio shows, just to get our, our shows mentioned. 
So that was how we used to do it. And now we have to transition into this online presence where we have to put money behind Facebook ads to hit the right audience, where we have to post in groups, we have to post on Craigslist, we have to run video ads if we have videos. We have to put more money and time into creating promotion for a show than we ever had to before. Flyers are like $20 for 500, where running $20 with Facebook ads, we might hit 100 people, we might not. And how many of those 100 people in that audience are really gonna come to the show? So it's, it's a whole evolution of the way that we have to market and promote. And while this is pretty much old news because we should have been doing this for the last, you know, eight to 10 years, which my band does, but not every band does it. And that in turn affects the whole scene. Because if a booker sees a band that's, you know, a couple years old, but they only have 200 friends on Facebook, they're not promoting their, their shows on Facebook. They're not inviting enough people. Maybe they're worried that they're not going to sell enough tickets. They're not going to have enough people through the door. And then it's a risk. So then they don't want to book new bands. They want to book the bands that they know that they see advertising, running Facebook ads, running ads on Craigslist, you know, pushing their shows any chance that they get. They don't want to take the risk on new bands or even bands that aren't doing it. They could be around for a long time and still not doing it. I, I know bands that have been around 10 years that still don't push their social medias or still don't try to make videos or Instagram posts to try to hit new audience people. They just expect the same thing to work. They expect to book a show and people just show up. This isn't you know, field of dreams. You can't just build it and have people show up. That's not how it works. Now you have to compete with every other piece of entertainment out there in Las Vegas, out there on the internet, to get in front of somebody to get their interest to come check you out. Another factor in Vegas that isn't as big of a factor in other scenes are cover bands. There's cover bands for everything. Cover bands are a dime a dozen in this town, and I get it. They're fun to watch. A lot of the fans that would be going to a show to see a new band are instead going to see a cover band playing songs that they're familiar with because they know that they're gonna hear Max Sabbath, which is freaking awesome. They put on a, a whole stage, so, stage show performance and they're fun to watch, but they're gonna get more people at a show, sell more tickets and get paid more than any local band in this town. And then we have bands like Metalachi. Again, they're amazing, super talented. They put on a great show, but they're a cover band with a gimmick. And they're going to get more people to their show than any local band can draw in this town right now. And I'm sure local bands aren't going to like to hear this, but the cover bands are making more money and drawing more people because people are familiar with them. Like I said before, if you're not promoting your stuff and getting your videos, your music, your promo stuff, out in front of all of these people that could potentially be fans, then the cover bands are going to steal that crowd. So if they're playing at House of Blues and we're playing at the dive bar, they're going to go see, the fans are going to go see the bands that have a gimmick and are more fun to watch on stage at House of Blues and pay 20 to $25 a ticket than paying $5 at the dive bar to see bands they've never heard of. Another issue too, like I mentioned before, is most of the bands, most of the musicians are like mid-20s to late 30s. So as you hit 30, most of the time you have more priorities. You have a family, you have a job, you're trying to make music full time, but it's difficult. Unless you're a session musician and you're playing in multiple bands, you probably have to have a job to pay the bills, especially with the way the music industry is right now. It's really hard to focus full time on music. I can't do it. I wished I could have done it in my 20s, but I had other situations happen, other predicaments, that made having a job, paying my bills, and having a career in something other than music be my main priority. And now I've got even more stuff to do. So raising a kid, going to work full time at a job that I love, and then running a business from home and having the band. That takes all of my time away from actually going out and checking out new bands. The only time I really get to check out new bands is when we play with them. And I'm always open to helping bands, like open for my band at a show and check out a new venue. I love doing that stuff and I missed when I was in my 20s and all I had to do was go to work, drink and play music. That was awesome, but now I have more priorities and I'm not the only one. Most of us in this scene right now that are my friends on Facebook and on Instagram that have been in bands in Vegas for a while are in their 30s or 40s 
and they have responsibilities. And those responsibilities take away from getting out there and supporting the other bands in the scene. And it's hard and it sucks, but it's life and that happens. Whether it was 20 years ago, before we had social media, people still had responsibilities. How many band members have you heard had to quit because their job moved them or they had a kid and they couldn't juggle job, kid, and band? It happens. So I, while it is a factor in the crowd diminishing, we have to do more to get that new groove out there. We have to hit those 20-somethings and get them interested in us. I heard conversations, or I read conversations on my, my post yesterday about people saying, well, the kids don't like metal, which I think is bullshit. There's just as many kids discovering metal out there as there was when we were kids. I have an 11-year-old. He loves metal. He listens to metal. He loves all kinds of music, but he's more influenced by metal because I am listening to it and putting it on my playlist and he has to hear it every morning. But most of the bands he likes are the metalcore bands that I'm into, which is awesome. And there's people just like me that aren't in bands, that aren't in the music scene, that are influencing their kids to be more open with music and showing them what the different genres are and how it can affect them. I mean, think about it. Think about the first time as a teenager or even a preteen that you listened to metal and it affected you. That's still happening. Just because we don't have radio stations pushing all the metalcore or harder metal stuff doesn't mean they're not still hearing it. We have local radio stations that still play Metallica on loop. Like just the other day I listened to Comp and they had like five Metallica songs that were being played one right after the other. Probably more than that, but after five I'm good. I can't listen to any more Metallica. But there's kids out there listening to the radio still. But we have streaming. Like I said with the online, like streaming is it. You have to get your music online in every single platform. You have to have a SoundCloud. You have to be on Spotify, Pandora, iTunes, Google Play. You have to put your music on YouTube. You have to try to work with online radio stations, with playlist builders. There's companies that build playlists just to get bands discovered on Spotify so you can get more views or more, more listens. So it's all a matter of making sure that you're getting your music out there to everyone and getting it accessible as much as possible. So just saying, oh, kids, the kids these days don't care about harder music. I think that's bullshit because I've seen it with my own eyes. I see kids at shows. Like I went to Machine Head uh, the other day and I saw people there that I've never seen at local shows here, but they're there because it's Machine Head and they have their kids and there's kids at shows when we play local shows at Vamp when they have all ages, there's kids there. So I know it's happening. It just we need to see more of it and we need to do a better job as a scene to get more music in front of the kids. There's opportunities out there and if there's not, we need to build them. We need to make better opportunities to get our music in front of the kids. And I think that if we work together, we can fix a lot of these issues that I'm bringing up. So another one of the main factors of why the scene is struggling right now is the bands. We're, it's, we're, we've been in the scene for 10 years. And in the last 10 years, trying to get the bands together as a family or a network has been the biggest hurdle. I literally tried forming a band co coalition in 2010 with some other band members here in town, different genres. We had hip hop, we had punk, we had metal. We, I tried to get them together, work as a coalition to network with each other. I can provide merch. I had a, a bass player that could provide stickers. We could trade flyers at shows and cross promote. And it lasted maybe four or five months before egos and attitude completely disbanded it. And then it totally discouraged me because this was the first time in my life as a musician where I came in, tried to get people together and it just imploded because of egos and attitude. And that is still happening today. It happens in every genre in this town. I mean, it happens in a lot of scenes. So a lot of these problems can be directly uh, correlated to, to Vegas, but I mean, insert town name here and I'm sure your scene is dealing with the same kind of issues. But egos and attitudes are the number one killer right now with the bands in this scene. There's more infighting over time slots and competition over crowds and they look at each other, the bands look at each other like, oh, well, I don't want to be friends with them because they got this show and we really wanted that show because of whatever national was playing on it, which is bullshit. We should be building each other up and helping each other make the scene better instead of fighting with each other. And then 
pushing the blame on Facebook when you have a poor attendance show like, oh, fuck you guys all for not coming out to my show because so-and-so was playing on the other side of town. That's stupid. And then it just makes you look like an asshole. The number one thing that Dimebag said, Dimebag Daryl said to everyone is don't be a dick. You want people to like you, don't be a dick. And that's what's happening. A lot of bands are being dicks to each other and it sucks. A lot of bands lose members because of attitudes and egos and they get in the way and it, it just it causes nothing but more problems in the scene. It's like we can't we can't fix the outward problem of smaller crowds, less venues if we can't even keep the bands from fighting and being drama queens over time slots and what how long they get to play, what kind of sound they have to use, like, ugh, just quit and get, like, quit be drama queens. Yeah. <laughs> and as I mentioned before, Vegas is a transient town, so getting band members to stick around is always hard too. You know, people leave, life happens. It is what it is. Another factor uh, are recent events. I mean, we all know what happened in October. Uh, here in Vegas. We know what happened to Dimebag and how he was murdered. We know what happened at the Queens of the Stone Age show. These things might take away the possibility of someone wanting to come out and see you at a show when they don't know who you are, they don't want to take a risk. It just adds another level of fear. And unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about that. Like we can add security and we can try to get more secure venues, but there's always that fear. It's, it's just happening. I mean, shit happens in the world and it's a fucked up place right now, but we need to keep pushing on and making our, our scene stronger by offering up more security and, and a safe place and a better community. If the bands are fighting, like I mentioned before, then the fans aren't going to want to come out because they're going to feel like something could happen between the bands. I don't know. It's just my opinion, but we know what happened. And we know that that's affecting show attendance and crowds across all entertainment platforms right now. Another big issue is music business in general. Like if you're a musician, you know what I'm talking about. Shows, merch, and album sales used to be a way that we could make money. And now we have to rely on 39 cent per stream deals on Spotify and hope that a music video we put on YouTube breaks 10,000 views just so we can maybe get a dollar. And especially now with YouTube partnership, like going down the hill. Thanks, Logan Paul. Uh, <laughs> we, we're not going to get paid unless we have over a thousand subscribers and over 4,000 minutes of view time, which it might not seem like a lot for these bands that have a ton of fans, but then there's bands like ours. Like we have two videos with over 11,000 views and we haven't got paid anything off that. So nowadays independent bands can't make the money to survive, to keep going, to keep playing these shows where they might get 50 to a hundred people and possibly make 50 to a hundred dollars. Um, you can't, you can't survive unless you're putting money into your band before you even start playing shows. Or if you're a band like ours, that's already established. I have to put money into every show that we book just to promote it, just to try to hit enough people. And then there's bands that just get on the shows. They don't do any promotion. They may be posted on their Facebook feed, but they're not like even $5 might help like a hundred dollars would blow it out of the water, but then you don't even know if you're going to get paid that back. So it's like a catch 22. You have to invest in yourself before you even start going out to play shows to try to make your money back. So how can we fix this? The Vegas scene is a mess right now. There's a lot of infighting. There's a lot of complaining. There's a lot of people behind the scenes trying to make things better, trying to bring the community together. But there's a lot of things that we need to do. We need to work together. We need to help each other with networking and using tools to market. Like I know how to do digital marketing. That's my career. I can help bands build out pages, get views on videos, and then I can do cheap merch deals and help you Consult, consult your band on how to sell it online. And while we have a website and we sell merch on that and stuff, most of our sales are in person at our shows. But there's cross promotion, there's meeting up and talking about issues and working them out without causing a whole social media war and infighting that makes us all look like assholes. 
So there's a lot of issues with the scene right now. I would love to see it get fixed. I would love to have a magic wand where I could just wave it around and be like, oh yeah, hey, there's five more new venues and there's, you know, thousands of people that want to come to your shows. I wish I could do that, but I can't. So instead, I'm taking my years of experience and hoping to offer some light in this darkness of the scene that it is, but um, I'm only one person. I need everybody to step up and help out. There's a lot of really great people in this scene that are doing things, trying to help the bands, trying to get together, trying to put on better shows. But really, like, we have a lot of things that are building up a wall against us to be successful. So we need to knock that down and try harder. Um, I have many times run into issues in my band where I'm like, fuck it, I don't want to do this anymore. All this hard work just to have one person, like, quit and then set us back three years or four years worth of work, it's hard. And sometimes I feel like I'm the only one pulling my weight. But then when I step back and look at the bigger picture, it's because I love music and I want to play with these guys that I have in my band. And I want us to be successful. We need to set goals. We need to aim for those goals. And once we hit them, that's our success. We're never going to be rich off of playing music. We're probably never going to get paid. But we love it. We do it because we love it. And with the music scene and the music industry the way that it is, we just got to keep trying and try harder and quit fucking fighting. Quit being dicks to each other. Just play shows and work together. You know, just because your band played first, my band played third, doesn't mean that we think we're better than you. That's just what the how the booker put the night together. And maybe it's because your band's a little bit softer and my band's a little bit harder before the headliner. And maybe because you guys complained about playing late and you have to work the next morning. I mean, there's many factors. There's lots of things that are causing this scene to implode and we need to pick up the pieces and put it back together and I, I'd love to get your feedback um, I know a lot of you that commented on my my status said a lot of the things that I said in this so I would like to see people come up with a positive like how can we fix it what is your suggestion instead of just complaining about all of the issues what can we do to fix it and let's get together and try to make that happen but thank you all for watching and I appreciate everyone's opinion and I hope that uh, we can all work together to make this a better scene in Vegas. And I hope that if you're not in Vegas and you saw this that maybe you can do something to try to help your music scene and your local metal band so, or bands. Um, and maybe there's issues you guys are dealing with in other scenes that we don't have here. Every scene is different yet somewhat the same. So anyway, leave comments, like, subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye.